Oh, oh. Being in my this is dangerous day. Welcome to Technical Contracting 101. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> hey, welcome to Postgram 101. Uh, we are so excited to be here. My name is Connor. I didn't know if my mic was on. My name is Maddie. It's so nice to meet all of you and to be here with me today. Uh, first things first, we would love for our beautiful panel to introduce themselves to you. Names and your Instagram and what Instagram is focused on, so we get a lay of the land before we officially dive in. Yeah, maybe we start with you. Oh, oh, hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, it's always great to be the first person to talk. Um, I am Meg Watt. Meg A. Watt, Meg Watt. I am the in book community as Queen B from Lit Buzz. We are the media partner for this event. So we review lots of books, and my handle for Lit Buzz is at the Lit Buzz. And my personal is at not mega watch. Uh, uh, hi, my name is Janelle Anderson, and my handle is Diz Adventure Life, like Disney. Um, and that's the same on TikTok and uh, Instagram. And I do a little bit of everything books, Disney, Orlando lifestyle. So it's kind of all encompassing. I'm Jordan. I'm old enough for fairy tales on Instagram, and I'm curious because about eight years ago, I was like, yes, this is a great idea. Um, and my Instagram is mostly focused on romance books, specifically indie authors. Um, I feature mostly self-published, small pub authors. Hi, I'm Miranda. My Instagram is mkcosplaynerd, and then my TikTok is uh, Miranda K Cosplays. I do mostly cosplay. <laughs> I tend to make a lot of my own cosplays or piece it together to mix of like anime, TV shows, and book characters. Such a cool thing. Hi. Um, welcome. Uh, I think the first question that, uh, as we were talking, we have is uh, as obvious as it may be. What what drew you to um, Instagram or drew you to Instagram? Um, how did you get started? And I guess we let's let's start with you. Let's go the opposite direction because I love chaos. <laughs> So, really, I just got more into indie authors lately because college killed reading for me. And then my friends was like, here, you need to read Avatar because I need something to talk to. It's like, all right, sold. And that was three years ago. And I read like 75 books a year now, easily. So, I am constantly reading. I, there's an audiobook that we digital, like we just like, oh. And I just wanted to help promote that. And then when I started talk, uh, reading indie authors, it's like, okay, I love these books so much. Like, I need to get the word out for these. So, that's how I started with more Instagram and TikTok on books. Um, I've been on Instagram for like eight years. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a grandma, like an Instagram grandma. <laughs> That's what I feel like. I feel like I'm gonna sound really old. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but I, I created my Instagram account because I saw Epic Reads had a blog post back when people were still doing blogging and things like, I'm about to feel really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, ever heard of Bookstagram? I was like, actually, no. So I looked into it, it's like, that's amazing. And people, like friends, were always coming to me for book recs, and so I thought, I'll just create an Instagram account where I can put book recommendations, and that's kind of where I got started. So, so cool. I love it. Janelle. So, <laughs> My page actually started as a Disney account. Um, I've been reading my whole life, way before it was cool to read, if you will. Like, I was that nerd where Belle was my idol. So this all started with Belle. Let's go, like, let's, let's be real. It started with Belle. Um, so she was like always my inspiration, my favorite character. Started a Disney account, moved from Minnesota to Florida to like be like, I'm gonna live my Belle fantasy. Right? I told her that she were from Minnesota. Minnesota. <laughs> And then I just kept talking about books on my Disney page, and people were like, um, what, do you, what should I read, what should I read, what should I read? And I found myself doing more book stuff than Disney stuff. So it kind of transitioned, and then my best friend and I started a book podcast called Book Bender's Little Plug. And um, now I'm more doing fantasy balls. I travel around the country doing this. So yay for Disney to books. 
Hello, I'm the gargoyle. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> <Play the> gargoyle. <laughs> um, I started reviewing in around 2012 or so. Um, I was traveling for work. I used to travel about 65% of the year. And so I, in my previous life, was a journalist. So I would read these books and I would just message the author, because like a journalist, and be like, hey, I loved your book, but why did you like, 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 And they'd be like, that's really insightful. Do you want to read an arc? And I was like, yeah, they send me a book for free. <laughs> and they were like, yeah. And I was like, sign me up. So I started reviewing. And, um, I, I wrote really interesting reviews because I write like I talk. And if you don't like how I talk, you're not going to like my reviews. <laughs> and so then they started going, like, well, then they started kind of growing because that was back when Facebook was still like cool. And uh, so it's kind of weird when a bunch of New York Times bestselling authors are your friends. People think you're more important than you are. <laughs> so they started at, like adding me on Facebook. And I was like, okay. I don't know what's happening here, but I'm really liking it. And then they would say, hey, would you review my book? So then I started getting all these books coming in. And they were like, hey, it would be easier if you had a blog. Do okay. <laughs> you guys remember those? <laughs> and I still have one? Hi, I do. Great, so, great. Oh. <laughs> And um, so I, I was like, I'm not going to talk about like turkey sandwiches. Like I have zero interest in blogging. They were like, just do what you're doing, but put it there and on Amazon. I was like, okay, okay, I can do that. So I started a blog over a Thanksgiving weekend. And by New Year's, I had 100,000 views on the blog. Magic the gargoyle. Yeah, the gargoyle. <laughs> and so I just ended up. I was like, oh, okay, I guess people want to read what I'm writing. And so I brought on two additional people. And so it's lit by the sort of themes. So I brought on two people to help. And it's just sort of grown from there. Like, most of my friends are authors. If you're friends with me on Facebook, pretty much like 75% of the people that I'm friends with are probably an author or a reviewer. And um, our focus still remains on the reviews. So our site has about 4.4 million views a year, and we do have Instagram, we do have TikTok, and all that stuff, and everybody has their own too, all 12 of us, but um, our focus is still on putting out really interesting reviews that give readers the opportunity to get a good feel for the book before they buy the book. Um, a lot of what we do with interviewing is just giving the authors the opportunity for you to get to know them as a person, as opposed to just like a cover, because there's so many that look the same. Okay. So, gargoyle. Gargoyle. <laughs> so good. I am curious how many of you are using this Instagram for some kind of monetization or official business platform, as opposed to, I do this and use this as a place to display my passions and my hobbies. Monetization? Who wants to go? Someone's me. I can go. So, I mean, back when I started my Instagram, it, it never crossed my mind that monetization was something that you could do. Um, and I really think, even though you know, I'm a bookstagram girly, I think that like with the creation of TikTok and BookTok, it, that's when people started realizing like, oh, like I could monetize this if I want to. Um, and so I, I do a lot of work with indie authors and use my platform to elevate them and share their books with people. And so a lot of, my followers are not bookstagrammers or not book talkers or whatever. It's people who are just readers who are looking for a place to get book recommendations. Um, but through my like eight years on Bookstagram, I've definitely been able to sort of figure out like trends with publishing and like covers that sell and covers that don't. Because we will all sit here and say that it doesn't matter what a cover looks like. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> want to like have this pretty cover to share on your Instagram. Um, so I have like since 2020 when it kind of became a thing like oh people figured out how to monetize their Instagram accounts. Um, I do consulting with indie authors so um, I work mostly with romantic authors and 
we, we get like an hour call together and we'll talk about marketing or like strategies for launch or um, cover design. We, we I help people write their blurbs. Um, all, just like basically branding and, and we talk about Instagram strategies and you know, let's rework your bio, you need to fix your pin post or you don't actually link to your book in your bio. You need to link to your book so you can go buy it, you know. Um, but yeah, so that's that's something that I have been able to do, and I really enjoy doing that. And I do some, you know, like sponsored posts. Um, but what I love the most is working individually with indie authors like that. It's just so fun to be able to help them. So good. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Janelle, you were about to offer something. Mine is very different. <laughs> um, so I'm that cringy word that we all hate to say. I'm an influencer. Um, that's not how this started. I was going through a very deep, dark postpartum depression when I started my Instagram, and I was just trying to do something that was for me and had nothing to do with my children. Um, and I was just trying to find a community, just people to tell it to that weren't my family. And uh, it just started growing, and I always thought you needed to have this big following to be get money like i was like oh you have to have at least a hundred thousand followers five hundred thousand like i don't know i thought you had a lot you don't i'm telling you right now you don't followers mean nothing when it comes to getting money uh except for on tiktok you do need to, that money you do need to have at least ten thousand on tiktok and that is like a bummer to get monetized on tiktok but then it then you make money but um, even if you only have ten thousand you don't make you, you don't. It's like pennies. You need to have a very viral reel to make money on TikTok, but it may happen. Um, but it's really more about engagement and your community that you've built yeah. if you really want to get brands to work with you or if you want to start making any kind of money. Get rid of the idea that your followers matter yeah. because that, that number means nothing. I mean, you can buy it. You can buy followers if that's what you want. That means nothing. But your engagement is everything. The community you build, you could have 2,000 followers, but if those 2,000 followers will buy everything you tell them to buy, if they like the books that you're telling them to buy or doing the things that you want them to do, whatever it is, this applies to every niche. It's the engagement. And you can make money with 1,000, 2,000, 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 followers, however many followers that you have and it can be lucrative. So yeah, I do a lot of brand deals. And I think with that, sorry to jump in, but I think with that too, it's about the community you built with your followers and the trust that you built with yep. them. And so that is where I think the other side of monetizing is, like comes into play is that, you know, for example, like I don't share every single book inquiry that I get. Like anytime an author wants to work with me, I want to make sure that it's actually something that I would enjoy and that my followers would enjoy because I have built trust with my followers and my community and so I'm not just going to put a book up on my page because I'm getting paid for it, like, yep. you know, because then that would just totally ruin the trust that I built and the community that I built. Um, and so that is the other side of it too, is like you really have to, like as a content creator, value the people that are engaged with you, like, and, and I don't know. I, it's like, it's okay, yeah, it's okay to say no to brands yeah. too. And like, you should. And you should, because I've had right. a lot want to pay me for a book review, but they will only pay me if I give it a four or five stars, and I right. refuse you yeah, to do that. And, and I know it's very enticing to be like, money, um, but I refuse, because the second you lose that trust with yeah. your community, it's over. It's yeah. game over. I, I will not do it. And also, um, for anyone out there, you legally have to disclose when you're getting hosted, paid, or gifted. Right. It is a crime not to do that, and a lot of people in our industry are not doing that. So, so that point, I know. you have to say when you are getting gifted, hosted, or paid for anything. So, I have legal I'm, advice from Janelle. Legal advice <laughs> from a not lawyer. <laughs> In my real life, I'm a VP of marketing, so I can speak at this on both sides. And I can tell you, I actively work in, on influencer campaigns every single day. And I will take a micro influencer campaign over yeah. mm -hmm. a, an influencer campaign seven days a week. Yep. What is the difference? A micro influencer is generally somebody who has a smaller fan base. And I'm going to not give you numbers because it depends on what the space is. 
since I work in other spaces other than books, like if I'm looking for somebody who talks about insurance, 50,000 followers for an insurance person is like, oh my god, it's gone! <laughs> you know what I mean? Whereas, like, if you're looking at, oh my god, fashion influencer, like, she needs to have five million or we're not talking if she's a real high level, okay? But when it comes to most things, the personal relationships happen with a micro engagement. And that's because th these people feel like they know you and they're interacting with you, and you're not having an assistant respond, yeah. like you are actually giving the, the feedback. But I'm gonna tell you right now, like, I am okay with it when an influencer says no, because it's okay to say no, because you're not gonna love every single thing. If you can't talk about it in an authentic, real way, your followers will roll out. They will go to somebody who does. So you always have to work. We have 12 people on our team, okay? We read all different kinds of books. I will never give a book to somebody that I know is not in their comfort zone or is not something that they like. One, because their followers would be like, what the hell are you doing? Right. And number two, because I know that the review they're gonna write is gonna be uncomfortable. They're probably not gonna give it a very good review because it's not something they like. Read books you like. Talk about books you love, a guitar. You talk about a guitar. You come back and talk about it again. You want to talk about wingspan? You bring it on. Okay? <laughs> so let anybody tell you what you have to do because there's no rules to this. It's still the Wild West. And you do what the heck you want to do and what feels right. If you want to take only pictures and not let anybody know what you look like, Jordan. I my face in them. Jordan. Then you do that. You know, if you are, like, I, like, if somebody told me today I should be Disney bounding, I just need some ears, I feel like I should go here and she can help me. I could. She can help me. I have she, a lot of ears. You know, but, like, how do you combine that with books and, and, you know, how do you combine Disney and books? She'll do it. Because that's what she loves. Find what you love, talk about it. You love the pie lady who makes the covers. Tell yeah. me you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. She makes the covers and makes them into a pie. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Not for what I'm hungry. <laughs> okay. But like, you know, she found two things she loves and she's making money. So do what works for you and who you are and is authentic with you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to add something to that because when I am working with authors, like I'm a consulting sort of like relationship, I a lot of one of the things that I'll help them with is like creating a street team, or their arc team, or how do I identify people to send my book to, or whatever. Um, and I think a lot of like go-to is, oh, bigger platform, that means they have more followers, because they're supposed to be seen by more people. But again, like that's not always the case. And so a lot of authors, and a lot of authors that I work with, I explain to them just how important micro-influencers are, and it's, a lot of times, if you, as an author, if you send your book to somebody who has 200, 300, 400 thousand followers, their community is going to be super engaged, and that person is going to be the creator, is going to be so excited that they have received a book from this author, and they're going to talk about it all the time, and they're going to read it, and they're going to love it, and they're going to champion it, and they're going to talk about it with people outside of Instagram, and bring it to their local book club. And so, I know that in the book community, on Instagram especially, I'm, I'm just not really familiar with book talk, so I don't know how it is there. Um, but on Instagram, a lot of times I see people discouraged about, like, I just, I can't grow, or I just don't have a ton of followers, like, how am I ever going to be able to work with authors? And you don't need, like you were saying, you don't need a ton of followers to be able to partner with an author and join a street team or receive an ARC. Um, it's just, you just don't. And I think that times are changing. I think it's becoming a lot more common for authors to seek out micro-influencers versus large accounts. And I think that's a great thing. So I want to just And don't be afraid to be bold. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, just ask for it. <laughs> Seriously, OK. But don't ask for a picture of people. <laughs> right? Like, as somebody who's friends with a lot of authors, some of the things, please, some of the things you guys send to us is weird. Like, <laughs> like, like, proofread before you send it, but don't, you know, 
like, if you want like, somebody to send you a book for free, don't send them a cease and desist. Whip it. And I... <laughs> so, people are weird, and that is real, and it did happen. Um, so don't do that. You know, but if it's like a book you genuinely think you would love to talk about, reach out. Yeah. That's how you book. And then tag them in your post. Yeah. As long as you're not talking crap about them. Correct. Right. If you're talking crap about them, do not tag them in your post. Right. Don't do that. You know, but yeah. that's how you keep it, like, that's how you build your engagement, too, because their followers are going to like see the post that you put up. And then they're going to go, oh, this person likes the same kind of books I like. Yep. I'm going to go check them out. Yeah. You know, that's what, like, I, you know, I looked right before I, I came on because I wanted to know and I was giving you an accurate number. We had 640 submissions of books last week. 640. Do we read 640 books? No. Not a week. That's not going to happen. I read 250 books last year, though. And so, and I can tell you at any given time, I'm reading a physical copy, an e copy, and listening to an audiobook every single day. And so I will, I will evangelize. <laughs> I will evangelize on the bus. I will evangelize in an elevator. I dragged somebody over to Grace Draven today. I was like, you need somebody for a book. I didn't know her. I'm Grace. I didn't know the person, but she dealt with it. So just be authentically yourself and evangelize what you love. And you will get a following for that. And you know what? You will have, guys. I have a post on LinkedIn right now. Yes, I said that. <laughs> that got 700,000 views last week on LinkedIn. I didn't know that was a thing, but here we are. <laughs> so you never know when it's going to happen or where, but it does. And when it does, you'll be ready for it because you've already made your authentic self. And then don't get caught up in it. Don't go, oh my god, okay, now I have to do all these things. Just do what you were doing because you're already there. You know what I mean? Be real to yourself and believe in yourself and you'll get there. Ask friends. Find a tribe. You know, I just said, we're going to be tattoo, like tattoos and soft tacos later. And that's, you just, you find tribes where you go and you, and there are bookstagrammers and book talkers that will like eat you up because they're in the same space and they'll share your stuff. So be each other's best friend because that's the best way to grow. I think that came right off of that. Um, I think that the, uh, what I'm hearing kind of as, a, as, a, as an overarching uh, theme is this, um, a big thing that scared me when I started out, and I, I hear this a lot from people who, are, who comment like, oh, I don't know how you, whether it's cosplay or, or any aspect, I'm not making you do that, like I don't, I don't have the know-how, I don't have the skill set. I was wondering if you all could speak to um, Bookstagram as a as a skill, as the skills that you acquired, maybe those skills that you were able to pull from previous iterations or, or other of other vocations that you were doing, but also I think a big thing that I'm hearing across the board is a is a journey into authenticity. Yeah. Which uh, I, I know the internet can be such a friendly, empathetic kind of <laughs> It's definitely where I go, I'm feeling comforted and loved. That's so encouraging. Our authenticity, vulnerability, and that is always so great. That, um, but uh, when everything is saying and screaming, do the opposite. Yep. Why? Um, how? How did you all embark on that journey into authenticity? I think that question made any sense at all. Yeah. 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 Start. Okay, wait, wait, we've talked a lot. Your turn. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh. She didn't want to start. Okay, I'll talk. Because I'll, I'll talk all day. Um, so, for me, I have a theater background. That is what I went to school for. I was like, I'm going to be a camera DST. I knew it. <laughs> that was my goal. Uh, it clearly happened. Um, so talking has never been a problem for me, um, but mental health has always been a problem for me. So imposter syndrome is mm -hmm. super real. Um, however, <laughs> we talk about the internet being super friendly. Um, there's nothing like posting something you put your heart and soul into where you're showing your face 
and you're like, I'm gonna do this really funny character voiceover thing, and it goes viral, and at first, a viral reel feels super good. <laughs> it's comments that love everything that you're doing, and then it takes a weird turn. Yeah. And the trolls are trolling, and they don't just say like, I don't like that book. They say, you're stupid, you're fat, you shouldn't yeah. be a mother. What kind of parenting is this? I mean, they will destroy everything about you that had nothing to do with the video that you posted. And it can be really easy to be like, oh, never doing that again. Um, but <laughs> keep doing it, because every engagement matters, whether it's good. Positive or negative. When they yeah. tell you negative, like, it, it well, all of us amongst each other in yeah. the comments. That's what I found. I, don't get me wrong. If, feel free to delete and block. If that's what you need to do for your mental health, delete and block five days. We do not facilitate our own bullying. Yeah. We do not do it. But let me tell you, there are some incredible people that will come in those comments to defend you, and you just let that keep rolling um, and let those numbers climb. Uh, but truly, like, when the world is telling you to do the opposite, that's your sign to keep doing what you're doing. That's how you are different from everybody else. And there are so many times that I've said, oh, I can't do this anymore. I'm done. I, I literally can't keep getting these comments. I can't keep going. And then one person will turn it around. One person will DM you and say, you just made my whole day, or I was having the worst day until I saw this video, or your story. My stories are how I engage with my people. Don't be afraid to use your stories. That is how people see into my real life. Like, my feed can look as pretty as I want it to look, but that's edited. But my stories aren't. My stories are me, my real life, everything I'm going through, and I will not shy away from talking about my mental health or my ADHD or how I'm neurodivergent. I know you're all out there! <laughs> I will talk about all of it, and it makes people feel like they know me better, and I feel like I'm actually getting to know my followers better, and that makes all the difference, because when those trolls come for me, I know the real people that are still going to be in my DMs and still continue to follow me, because those people aren't following me. I don't care what you think. <laughs> I'm not making this for you. Like, I don't care. And also, there are gross people out there. I'm just saying. Yeah, if you're a girl, you get it. So let's block those ones. I want you guys to take a minute and look at this panel and tell, like, in your mind, I want you to think from my perspective, one of these things does not belong. Stop! No, 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 no. I don't actually do that. But what I'm saying is, in your head, we'll do this all the time. Yeah. Because you will look at every other influencer out there and say, oh my god, their book stacks are beautiful. Oh my god, I love, like, they, they clearly are getting sponsored. Oh my god, god, like, that person can do their makeup so well. The aesthetic space, if you're in Bookstagram or Book Talk, you know that you're like, my house doesn't look, I don't have a bookshelf that looks like that. I can't, I, my shelfies are not that fabulous, but the thing is, like, the reality is, I came from a journalistic background, so I, I wrote things in a newspaper. So you didn't see my face. And so, I don't care. But uh, you have to develop a thick skin for that. Yep. Yeah. Because they will hurt your feelings. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. even, so even if you think that you don't care, there's still that one comment where you're like, whoa. Yeah. I didn't leave my mind. Every time I look at myself now, I'm like, does my left eye close for the right eye? I think it does. And, and it'll stay with you. But you can't let that hold you back. Um, the journey is just figuring out who you are, who you want to perceive, like others to perceive you as, and then you have to develop a safe bubble for yourself. So you were talking about using stories. Also, close friend stories. Yeah. There are stories that you share with the people you actually love. Yeah. And then there are stories you share with other people. The drunk stories, if you will, the ones that you post where you're like, no one else can see. <laughs> and you're like, oh my god. Yeah. Like, Because you're going to get some jerk who will screenshot that. Yeah. And eight years from now, that will come up randomly. You'll be like, oh my god, I, never, I don't even know that person anymore. Right. Don't be afraid of it, but just know that you have to prepare yourself for it. You have to develop a thick skin, or you can't get past it. Or 
you have to develop, you have to separate yourself to the point where what you're posting is just beautiful pictures that have nothing to do with you as a person. Your pictures are stunning. Thank you. True. <laughs> so, but do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's really, I can't express to you enough how important it is if you do not perceive yourself as perfect today, I don't care if you are or you're not, if you do not perceive yourself as perfect, it doesn't matter what I tell you, somebody's gonna tell you something that's gonna make you feel bad. Just keep going. Yeah. Brush it off. If you get big enough, get people that can share the load. So I went through a really, really rough year. I leaned on my team. They all took over, like, helping on Instagram and putting stuff out there because, because it was a, it's a rough year. Make sure that you have a support system that'll get you through it. Yeah, and I think that's where, too, it's important to remember, like, who am I creating this content for? I'm creating it for, and, and I think of, like, specific names that I've, like, met in the last couple of years on Instagram who have... Like they're they were just really engaged with my content and would be like, Jordan, I write like all the books that you recommend and they're so good. And like now I've become really good friends with them. I'm like, okay, these are people I'm creating content for. These people, not this random person that somehow came across a reel on the Explorer feed and has decided to make their opinion known. And I'm like, who are you? You don't read books. Like you you don't like I'm reading posts about romantic books specifically. You don't even read romantic books. Why are you commenting on my reel just to be me? Yeah, you know? get nagged a lot. Yeah, and like, so you're like, oh, this would be a lot better if you were like not ugly. Oh my gosh, I bet what? you <laughs> cosplay a lot, right? So it's, I've been wanting to do cosplay, but I'm like, I don't look anything like, I feel like I can only do Morgan. Like, I'm like, I'm a blonde. Like, I can't do Chris. Chris, you should have it. Look at that. Yeah, they do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, but like, I imagine that this is like big in your world because I've been like, I want to do Lee, but I'm blonde. Is this acceptable? But like, I imagine you get this. Oh yeah. Time. So I would say I'm still working with the authenticity part because I have had to grow thicker skin over the last couple of years. Because, We're here for you. Yeah. Yeah. There's, which I will say, I have a larger following on TikTok than I do with Instagram, but I have a lot higher community with Instagram. Like, I have all of my cosplay friends and then book readers who then cosplay in books that I meet at conventions, and we will all boost each other up. We will attack others in their comments if, like, somebody's bullying them back and forth, and it's a lot tighter knit, and I honestly have a better engagement performance on there than I do on TikTok. Like, I have my same five followers that comment on every single TikTok video. Even though I have thousands of followers, I have the same like 200 views. So honestly, I would say Instagram is a lot better with that. And because of the community that I have on Instagram, they then move over to TikTok and then we kind of do the same thing over there. But yeah, it's not so much the you can't cosplay that character. It's definitely more, oh, well, this cosplayer does it better. Their yeah. wig is they have a better tiara. Well, that's the okay. yeah. plus size. Yeah, price is plus size. Like, like, all the things. Like, yeah. Yeah. Or like, yeah. you can't cosplay this character because yeah. you're not the right body shape. Like, yeah. Don't let that stop you at all. Like, you do what you love to do. If you love that character, don't let things like hair color or eye color or your body shape stop you from cosplaying a character that you absolutely love. Love that. And that's what we were saying, too. Just walk. Yeah. Like, don't be afraid to walk. Okay, yeah. well, like when a reel goes outside of, because kind of like you were saying, Bookstagram tends to be very kind and uplifting, and I really love the community aspect of Bookstagram, like it is wonderful. But when a reel goes outside of Bookstagram, that's when it's like, okay, this was not, this kind of wasn't for you. And I just block people. Like yeah. if there's somebody who's mean to me, I delete the comment and I block it because I know that I, I don't have the thick skin where I just feel like, well, it's you probably. I'm here for you. Yeah, and that's okay too. Yeah, and so I just need to like remove it and not see it. I will mom anybody. You message me <laughs> and you say, I need a pep talk, I have your back. I'm here. <laughs> okay, good. I will yeah. like, when you have that community that backs you up yeah. and they're fighting the other commenters, I let that go. Like, I'll let you book it out. Do not engage. It's, it's great yeah. engagement. Do not engage. Yeah. Repeat it. But I will not engage. engage. Yeah. Do not do it. Yeah. So if they're engaging with them, I'm like, all right, you have you. You 
argue with each other over on the comments who's the video more. But if you start attacking me personally or how I look or what I'm doing, then it's like, all right, no, not for my yep. mental health. You're just yeah, we're, we're yeah. done here. You you have to protect yourself. Yep. It, that's really important. But also, like, we're all human, okay? Yep. So the, your first reaction is like, I'm gonna go respond to that. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, made by, I've made some mistakes. <laughs> 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 we, 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 you know what? It's worse when you're like, you know, it's like ten o'clock at night and your your is growing, right? <laughs> and you're like, you get that notification, and you're like. What? <laughs> you know, so then you're like, right? You have to stop yourself. Wait till the morning till you're rational. And by that time, someone will probably have stepped in and on your behalf. But if they haven't, you gotta step away. Because you will never look as somebody who works in public relations and marketing, you will never look good to me if you are engaging. You will be toxic to me. Yep. Because I don't want to associate my brand with somebody who's going to say something stupid. So, your brand, remember this, you're your company. You need to always present yourself like you're going into a business meeting. Talk like that. Talk like yourself. But you would never go into a business meeting and go, you stupid. Don't do it. Don't do it. Let them work it out themselves and ignore it. Go do something else. Have a cocktail. Have a cocktail. It's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I have so many questions. I'm in chat box, so I thought I'd let you go. Well, what I, one of the questions I was thinking of, you guys were talking about developing trust with your audience. And you talked about a couple ways that you guys prioritize doing that, like not uh, doing disingenuous reviews about something that you don't care about. That's one way that we can instill trust uh, with our with our, our people, our community. What are other ways that you feel like you uh, had to learn in about instilling trust with your with your people in ways that you've found that are really effective in instilling trust with your community? Um, I think a good, I've always been pretty active in my stories. I like to talk to people on my stories and just kind of like share a little bit of, that's where I really share like my life. <laughs> I share my real life and my stories. Um, and that's where I'll like engage back and forth in DMs with people. And I think that DM interactions with people, responding to comments when you get comments. Every time you can. Yeah. Um, and then I try, and I'm not, I don't do this every single time because I also have five year old twins. So it's just like, I have a lot going on. Oh my life. God, everybody, please give it up. I know. It's not for a So, but what I try to do is like, a couple of times a week, I go to one of my posts and I'll go then like return interaction on somebody else's post. Like if they come to mine, I'll go comment on the last few of theirs. And that's really key, I think, to help me develop those relationships. And then just you then know more about this person who is following you. And you might find that you have things in common and you read their caption and you know things about their life. Um, so stories replying to engagement that you receive. And then I am really, I love my broadcast channel right now on Instagram. And I know that not everybody like has that feature for some reason. I think most people do now, but I like share stupid things in my broadcast channel. I call them my inner circle. <laughs> and it's just like, I was, when I flew in on Thursday, I walked into the back of my MCO and there is this like, purple inflatable dinosaur. Somebody in like a dinosaur costume standing in the bathroom with a bouquet of balloons. And I was like, what is happening here? Like, this is so weird. So I like snapped a picture of it and I put it in my broadcast channel and I was like, how do you know this? And what do you wonder? And then we just like engaged about it. And it was so entertaining and so funny. And that has been cool, a cool space for me to use that I don't like, a lot of people aren't using it. And I is a really underused part of Instagram because a lot of people that I engage with my broadcast channel have never commented on a post, have never engaged with my stories. Like maybe they're intimidated to respond to my story or something about that is scary, but they'll engage with myself in my broadcast channel. And so that's been really neat that I'm able to like engage with these people that I otherwise haven't been. Um, and just sort of creating like a bigger community, but it's still like tight knit. I don't know. Like it's, it's well, that, not, that stuff isn't monetizing you, but that's building your brand. Yeah. And so you have to understand from a marketing perspective, 
Those are two very different things. Marketing and branding are very different things. Um, building your brand is really essential, and that is building relationships. Making your authentic self feel authentic, so then those people will then like click on your reels so that you get monetization, which is what you optimally want in, in that case. Um, but you have to you have to be real to them somewhere, and yeah. that works for you, and that is a safe space, right? Um, you know. You have, when I said be bold before, you have to try all different things. Yeah. Um, you might get in and you know, you think everybody's on book talk right now, okay? Everyone's not on book talk right now. They, they get around. We have a, an immense following on Facebook. I don't even know how that happened. But they're there and they respond and they participate and they, you know, cool. So we still use it because they're there. To find where your people are. Yes. Yeah. And then go to those people. Give them, you know, Give them what they're looking for, where they are. One thing you will learn from a marketing perspective is that your demographic is super important and understanding who that is is really important. When you were asking before about like, you know, you know, how you, you got where you are, like when you know, we've always been very open to all books. We're very, very indie friendly. It didn't matter how big we think we got, we will still always like we have some reviewers who just lose their minds over an indie book every time. We still fan girl, like really, really hard. <laughs> Even if there's something we've known for years. And we'll authentically do that when we're interviewing them because that is who we are. You know, we've kept that. Even though it doesn't look as quote unquote professional or buttoned up, that's not who we are, that's not where fan base is. We want them to feel like they're sitting in the chair interviewing someone. So if you're interviewing Penn Cole and you're a big Penn Cole fan on the movie you use the list, you're gonna lose your mind because that's how it is. That's okay. I mean, you still have to go talk. <laughs> talk. But, you know, do an Instagram live. You know, just jump in, try it. Yeah. yeah. Facebook live, you can throw say, those in there. Take advantage of threads right now. Yes. yes. Threads are fun. Although book threads can it also be a little question. It can, it can. <laughs> One, another great way to monetize, I'm making more money on threads than anything else right now. But two, another good way to build trust is community over competition. Let me say it again, yeah. community over competition. So sharing other people that you love is also a good way to build community because then you're like, lifting up other people in your community and then that builds more people coming to you because they're like, oh, I found this person because of you and it just, it, it keeps going. But also like, yes, stories is my go-to for how people see me and I, I mean, I share my husband's cancer battle, I share my ADHD and my son's autism, like all the things. Not everybody wants to share that much and that's fine. But you're gonna wanna post stuff in multiple places because at any given moment you could lose your Instagram, you could lose right. your TikTok. So you wanna like back that up. That's and true. Emails, like whatever you wanna do, YouTube, blog, like feel free to post it everywhere because you never know where your stuff's gonna take yeah. off. And when you're beginning, just kind of try a bunch of things. You don't know. And I stick with what you like. Yeah, like, yeah. Don't, don't either. Either. Like especially if you're doing photos. Yes, to yeah. your Pinterest in there. Yeah, just your photos, all the things like lemonade. Like, I mean, just go go to all the places <laughs> and do all the things because you never know what's going to happen. And I know a lot of people when they're starting, they don't want to put their face on camera. They don't want to talk to camera. A lot of us still don't. And and that's okay. But I will tell you, it get the more you do it, the easier it gets. Yeah. Usually, just talk like you're talking to your friends. Yeah, all yeah. of you guys are my best friends. I don't know if you know this. That's how I talk. Yeah. That's all. Like, we're, we're just talk like we're friends. Yeah. Um, but if you, if you're not comfortable talk, like if you have a stutter, or if it's uncomfortable for you to do that, don't do it. Yeah. Find what works for you. There's like that. a questions box, or you can even do the anonymous like post yeah. on your in your Instagram where people can ask you questions, and you yeah. don't have to respond with a video. You can just respond with like text or a picture or whatever and that's a great way to engage without showing your face if you don't want to do that so and don't do amas if that makes you nervous because yeah. every single ama you do somebody's going to ask you to put something in the video yeah don't do it so something that i talk to authors about when we're talking about this like building a community and finding your readers and helping your readers like continue to 
feel engaged with you, especially if you're like between books, is showing up in your stories. And and again, a lot of my authors are like, I don't want to put my face on the camera. I'm like, that's fine. You don't have to. Do you drink coffee or tea in the morning? And they're like, yes. So just put a snap a picture of your coffee or tea. Doesn't need to be aesthetic. Doesn't have to be pretty. Take a picture. Put up a poll that says, do you like coffee or tea? Or how do you drink your tea? Or what is your go-to Starbucks order? What do you like to do with Target? Like what color coffee do you like? Right. It's like all the different like yeah. waistband yeah. or sword yeah. like. Exactly. <laughs> 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 or and it helps you to create this relationships and it lets people know a little bit more about you, you know a little bit more about them, and you're not having to show your face. And it is a good way to sort of like ease in the stories but still create those those really unique um, interactions. And if they suck, they're only up there for 24 hours. Right, so who cares? The other thing I wanted to say though is that you should try different platforms and see what works for you, but don't feel like you need to be on every single platform. Exactly. Yeah. Because that is exhausting. That's why I like I tried book talk for a hot minute and I was like, not for me. Yeah. I don't have the capacity, I don't have like the, the mental health strength, I think, to be on book talk. And so Bookstagram has just kind of always been my safe space. That's where I've always been, that's where I love being. It's it's I feel safe there. Um, and that's just all I have the capacity to do. And so don't feel like, well, I'm also on threads. I love threads. I love threads. <laughs> I love it. People are unhinged yeah. on threads. They are really unhinged. And they, they really roll with it. Yeah. yeah. But you know, like, even, okay, so everyone will tell you that this is the next thing and then everything else is gone. Yeah. But they come back around. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys understand that YouTube is the largest search engine in the world? Yeah. Mm. People don't realize that. They don't put that together. But if you're doing video, you're so right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're already doing short form video, put it, put it on short. TikToks can transfer. Just transfer. And you'll get yeah. dinged a little bit because you know they like know that you put it somewhere else. But not enough that it's a big deal. Use you reuse your content. Yes. Yep. Find ways to use it in different ways. Yep. And don't be afraid to do something that is different. Mm -hmm. Yep. But don't exhaust yourself, like, and don't get sad if people aren't looking at it, because they will eventually look. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you'll get that, you'll get that high. <laughs> 700,000 views on LinkedIn. Woo! <laughs> and then the next day, you'll get 20. And you'll be like, okay. Yeah. But they'll come back again, eventually, someday. That would hurt everybody. Yeah. yeah. That would hurt for literally all of us. Have some posts or reels or TikToks or whatever do that we think is the best ever, right? And nobody will see it. It's and just it's like the like, more time you put into it, the worse it does. And the ones that I don't like, think about yeah. at all do well. But I will also say, have a support system because there will be people that are like, "Why are you doing that? It's oversaturated." Like my friend and I started a podcast, and there was someone that was like, "Everybody has a podcast," and I was like, "Everybody cool. has two more." Okay. You know what? Like, I don't know what to tell you, but we like to talk about books and we have nobody else to talk to about it, so we're just gonna do it and we put it on YouTube, Spotify, Apple, uh, TikTok, Instagram, all the things, because I don't care what anybody else thinks. I wanna talk about books with my bestie, okay? When you get another podcast done. I tried a podcast and you would think I would be good at that. I really suck. <laughs> it's not for me. And I was like, eh, one episode, that's all we're doing on that one. <laughs> so, I took my toe in and I was like, ooh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's not for me. So you quickly know. Like you knew when you booked it. Like you're gonna be like, that's this is not my this is not my lane. And that's okay. And that's you okay. and you know what your lane is and you go to it. Surround yourself with people that believe in you though. Yeah. Like, there you go. Yeah. Don't get those people that are like, why? Oh my god. The people that love to hate watch, you know. It's funny how There's you have so friends. Many money, sister. Yeah, the friends that you have that uh, aren't liking, aren't commenting, but are always commenting behind your back or making little rude right. remarks about like, oh, everybody does that, or oh, <laughs> oh you like a guitar, oh, okay, just like yeah. everybody else. Yeah. Those aren't your friends. Those aren't your people. Yeah. Find the people that are like, yes, girl, do it. Do it, do it, do it. Don't be afraid. Those are your real friends. And every the author that you share will lose their yep. mind yes. about it. Yep. So yes. if yeah. you ever want a serotonin like spike, if you want to feel amazing, share a, a the author. Yes. Or like send it to them and tell them you 
off their books. Yes. I'm telling you, it makes their day. And they're not scary, and they're not intimidating. Send them a DM and tell them, I, I just finished your book, and it's amazing. When is book two coming out? Or whatever. How can I support you? Do you have an art team? Do you have a high team? Because, and if you're not on an art team, them. you can do that right now. Net Galley, if you guys aren't, like, you don't have, go to Net Galley. Anybody can be on Net Galley and get arts, you guys. Like, I need a way, but I don't know mine. Yeah, like, anybody can sign up. Like, my very first time signing up for Net Galley, I got an Emily Henry book. So, wow, Berkeley Romance Proofs, no one. I, I get a pretty good one. I don't know. I think it's just you, Jordan. Well, she, 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 I, got, <laughs> I got happy place straight up the gate. Yeah, I got happy place straight out the gate, and I was like, maybe it's because I, I was like, maybe it's because I already had a book. Ever going to know, know how much you know, like art? I haven't gotten any how to do that. But, yeah, that's what I do. Happy town. Sorry, I'm just talking to you guys individually. Like, we're having a side conversation. The rest of you go away. We just have a side conversation. I, I, it's, I know it's very daunting and everyone thinks like, oh my god, what do you... Okay, if you're going to try and get the next Sarah G. Moss book, no, honey. That's not happening for you. But like, you know, be realistic. You know, who could you date? That's what you should think about. <laughs> and then you should go out with it. If you take nothing else away from this panel, take that away. <laughs> so, but that's... You know, just get started somewhere, yeah. message them, you're very polite. You know, I love your books, or I love your cover, like, make it nice. Yeah. And follow the publishing teams, because like, oh, I don't yeah. know if there's any Megan Quinn fans in here, but Good Girls PR will always be like, hey, we're taking sign-ups for ARCs. And like, a lot of them will just post it up there, like, who wants to be on our team? Build but you have to do the work. But you, yeah, yeah, like, you have to do the work. Do. They're going to have you fill out a form afterward to show where you posted it. Yep. You have to respond to those things because if you don't, they will not give you another book, guys. Correct. Okay? So if you want to keep doing it, do it the right way, follow the rules. And I mean, you get lots of free books. Who doesn't love free books? And a lot of them will start out as e arts, and that's okay, yeah. but like a post of book babes. So yeah. Listen, I prefer e art because there's, I have 3,000 square feet in every room, including my bathroom. Has bookshelves. <laughs> okay? I can't take any more books. Yeah. So I prefer the art. If I come to an event like this, we can walk you around. You're like, oh, these are beautiful. I am not just getting started as a as a bookstagrammer. I would love to share your books. Can I, you know, can I get in touch with you after the event? You will get so many people in there who are like, absolutely, I would yes. love that. Yes, absolutely. Do it, guys. This is your opportunity. This is your people. Look around this room. These are your people. You support each other, you support the cosplay teams, and you, you support the authors. And every time you come to these events, you'll have more people. You'll have more fans. And even if you decide that you don't want to be a book talker or a bookstagrammer, and you just want to share the books you love, you will find new friends that you didn't know you had that also just love people who share books they love. Yeah. Also, so, the cosplay community is like one of the best communities ever. Woo! Really? This, this event. Come on, you guys. Tell me, that end of the table, how impressive are the number of costumes? I thought you guys had Amber with you last night. No, oh, she just rolled up. No, she's just here. She's my new best friend. I love her. <laughs> you know, so you can, like, just, just, you know, this, this event really is a great place for you. You're among your people. Roll with it. Make friends. Pass out stickers. Yep. Friendship bracelets. Be your authentic self. Find people that will follow you now because they will like your posts because they're your people. Yes. And then you will, you will either you will build or you will just share what you love. But either way, you're winning. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Well, and speaking of the people in this room, do we have any questions that you are going to ask this now? Because, oh, sweet. <laughs>
Astrid Hopperson from How to Train Your Dragon. So, not book related, because she's not even in the How to Train Your Dragon books. <laughs> yeah, she was fanning over toothless at the university. Yes. Absolutely. 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 So excited for the How to Train Your Dragon books. Like, where's they come? Sign me up. Who does not love toothless? Like, get out. <laughs> But then one of my other like favorite book cosplays to portray is actually Annika Pender from Crescent City. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll have to be her tomorrow morning, so we can find her. But yeah, I'm saying anything fantasy, so dragons, shapeshifters, high fae. I just finished a book about a wraith, so I mean like yeah. anything. Was it the wraith thing? That's the one I just finished last night. Yeah. And we had Any other questions from the audience? So, I have a bunch of um, cousins at the university that are for tomorrow, so I'll be looking for you. Yes. Um, but also, to the cosplayers, like, what would you get into it? Like, how did, you know, how did you decide one day that this is something that you're going to do? Not just for the character, but like, continue to embrace other characters that touch you. So, like, how did I start cosplaying? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, for me personally, my friend in college actually was like, hey, I'm going to this anime convention and I'm dressing up as two splits. Do you want to join me? It's like, what's that? Sure, what do I need to do? So I threw together an Ashton Hofferson costume and it was very badly done. Like, it was terrible. It's bad. <laughs> if you scroll back far enough, you can find it. Um, but that was really the start. I really enjoyed sewing it and finding the pieces to make it look the most realistic. And then it's just kind of grown from there. And now every time I read a book, I'm like, there's two more characters I want to do, so my cosplay list of to be made is honestly just as long as my to be read list at this point. <laughs> it's an expensive hobby. Yeah. Which is yeah. why I work at Joanne Fabrics. I need that extra discount. <laughs> yeah. I was on a panel with Drew Lorde earlier, and I don't know who you follows her, but she was a cosplayer and now mm -hmm. is a really successful author. But I met her at a polycon wearing wings. And so I was like, girl. What is happening? Like, yep. but you, know, you like you progress. Mm -hmm. That was her gateway drug into being an author, and she <laughs> used that, you know, to her advantage. Honestly, that kind of got me into reading again too, because I was just portraying like *How to Train Your Dragon*, or *The Movie Roundhouse* from *Jumanji*, and like things like that. You know, just like you get books. Okay, you totally look like *Ruby Roundhouse*. Yeah, yeah that is. <laughs> yeah. So it just opens up a whole new world, honestly. Awesome. That's so cool. Hi, my name is Anna Bates, welcome to being here. I just wanted to, actually, you asked a fantastic question earlier about this. You worded it really well, but it was like, to the effect of the skills that you guys tap into and what you've grown on, you know, your Instagram, and if you'd like to circle back to that. Skills you get. Skills you have to develop to do this thing. So you have to figure out if you're, if you're a photography bookstagram, or you're a video bookstagrammer, like there are different kinds. Mm -hmm. So like you can graphic. Like graphic people will put like the picture of the book and they'll put little arrows like, you know, one bed, you know, because that's not that's what they're jamming. Some people, Jess, uh, like for my teammates, the most beautiful stack. Like she's a book stack girl. Love you. Um, you know, you'll have people who like just can do these flat lays, which is like when you have the book down and like flowers and candles and like the, those are like that's a different way. Some people go on. Um, you know, we had somebody on our team who would be like, "Hey, I'm blank, blank, and I'm sitting in the truck, and this is what I'm reading right now." You find what, what like what your lane is and what is a, like a natural flow for you. If you're a natural talker, you should just talk. Yeah. You know, if you're not a good like you can build photography skills. It's not that you can, but you have to have aesthetics. If you don't have aesthetics, you should not be with violent friends. Like, sorry guys, just throwing a candle in there does not get better. Yeah. You know? I also think you get caught up into like thinking you need certain equipment or yeah. yes, specific yeah. things and you just need your phone. Yeah. Like honestly, so I do more video, so for me it was learning how to edit. Um, CapCut has become my new best friend. CapCut is free. CapCut yeah. is a free app and... Um, Canva. Canva, yes. Good. I mean, there is an uh, InShot. Yeah, the InShot. InShot is very similar to CapCut, um, but CapCut has this thing where you can like plug in your videos and like hit like auto create and it'll give you a bunch of different 
versions of your video. So if you like have no idea how to edit, that's how I did things in the beginning. And I was like, that looks great. Um, but learning how to edit was like the biggest skill I had to learn. Um, because if you go back and look at my YouTubes before I knew how to edit, it was like an hour of me just talking with a lot of ums and ahs and just like weird shaky camera things happening. Um, you just need your phone, that's it. It doesn't matter if you're taking pictures or or talking, yeah. uh, video or one. And she tripod, guys. I highly recommend it. Yeah. If you're going to do any video, or even uh, actually photography too, get a cheap tripod because it will, it will change your life. And if you're going to get anything, lighting, like yeah. try to get natural lighting you can, but the, like, the lighting like, makes a big helpful. difference, especially for video or photography, it doesn't matter. Lighting will make a big difference. And don't think that you have to stick with one, like yeah. one style of right. photos, or yeah. one style of or one filter. You on can do yeah. all of that. That's what I do. I, I feel honestly like don't have a theme. Yeah, <laughs> and like my aesthetic like page is not for me. Like, I'm so impressed by people that can have an aesthetic page because I'm too chaotic in my brain to even mm -hmm. think about a layout and how it would all look. Cover photos, all of that jazz, but it doesn't have to, like, be perfect. Just start posting. Just post it. That's like the big. But if it's easier for you, like we actually use templates. Like we, this is this is the template for a book cover. This is a template for a quote. This is, and that way, like you change little elements out of it, but it's done. So you don't have to like sit there. But okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Where does it go? You know where it goes, and it's quick and easy. And, and then you just put a trending song, and you're good. Yeah, and I agree. Like as far as. Not knowing how somebody creates something, or like, like I do pictures with like arrows and little tropes and what you do books. Uh, I use Canva for that, and I have people ask me, well, how do you do that? I am more than happy to tell anybody yeah, what app you do, how I do it, what's not yeah. gatekeepers, okay? So, like, like, let's just explain it. To, so I was talking to somebody today in the cafe, she's like, I'm just starting out, and I don't really know Photoshop or anything. I don't know Photoshop either. I use I Photoshop a lot of book covers into my photos, like if I don't own the book or if it's like a cover reveal or something. And there's an app that I use that I love, and it's 99 cents, but it's called Superimpose, and it's one word. And if you're on Bookstagram and you create bookish photo content, you should use Superimpose because it is so easy and it's 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 great. Can I can I give you another tip too? If it's book related, Book Brush. It's what all authors use. To like, like most of the authors use book brush, um, it will automatically take the cover and make it an angle and put it into a, like, a layout and it gives you like 20 layouts. And it's super easy, super cool. So, like, if you don't know what to, to do to start, it's just get you started. And there's some things that you can't change later, guys. Like, yep. you, you have to start somewhere. Like, it's what I said, if you try something, but you know, I'm not a podcaster. Try it, you don't like it, figure out what to try next. But, um, you know, doing live stuff on these events, you know, taking pictures of like your pile, like, you know, a couple of years ago we went to a polycon, I rented this house. It had like, I picked the house because they had tile and wood and all these different like surfaces that we could put piles of books on. And you just in this last day, just all of us like taking pictures of piles. But, you know, find something that's pretty in your neighborhood, in your community, your own library, and take pictures. Yep. Um, because that's the, like, the best way to start. Or if that's not your jam, do TikTok Live like Miranda is right now. <laughs> yeah, like, you never know what's going on. Hi! Hi. <laughs> Just, but again, if you ever, don't be afraid to DM people because yeah. most people, especially in the post community, are more than willing and happy to share whatever knowledge they have. And if they're not, we don't like them anyway. We don't need them in your community. But also, like, follow up, though. If somebody doesn't respond, you follow up. Because sometimes things get lost in hidden message requests, and I okay. think that I see it, but then it's not showing anything. And so just also comment that. on the story, like I said. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> comment on the story. Hi. Um, thank you so much for doing this. Um, my friends and I are trying to get a podcast going. It's all about book boyfriends. It's been super fun to record with you. We don't have it up yet. But one of the things that we're going to do is like our real life um, friends paying jobs, like being a little bit of a world teachers. And so like it's just been a little bit overwhelming to try to balance that with like our fun hobby. Like what are some tips for you to like balance both of those? Oh, that's a good question. What is balance? I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know. 
So I will say for me, because I'm, I'm a mom, I have children, we have like a whole life outside of this. I literally have to set an alarm to tell myself to put my phone down to unplug. And I think it's very important that your hobby doesn't become the thing that gives you stress. Like that you need to have releases. And if reading or, or podcasting or whatever suddenly becomes the thing that's stressing you out more than anything and it was supposed to be the fun thing, yeah. you need to take a break. Yeah. You need to unplug. And uh, we live in a society where we are glued to our phones. And I think it's very important to find the balance of uh, remembering what life is like away from your phone. It's why doing it authentically is one of the most important things in doing bookstagram or just being a public, I don't know, engaging in a, in a, with larger audiences. If you do it authentically, it usually doesn't suck from you in the same way, like, I have to present myself in this really, really specific curated way. That will drain you so yep. fast. So, I, I, I know I'm not on the panel, but I know that, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you know, for years now, people have always been like, why don't you quit your day job and just do it by and in theory, I could probably do that, but I wouldn't love it as much. Yeah. Like it's, it is my, like it is the love of my life. Who needs a man? I love my team. I love reading my books. I love coming to these events, girls. <laughs> and, um, and so I will never let it get sullied by becoming something that makes me unhappy or that is toxic or that you know forces me to surround myself with people I don't want to be around. And so if you, you know, what I think is Find your bubble. You know, what is, do you need time limits? Do you need somebody to check your messages? Like, who on your, who out of your group is the biggest game? Who is the most, like, calm? You know, that's the person who should check your messages, not the thick skin person. Because the thick skin person will come out hard. <laughs> but the calm person will really not okay, you know, whatever. You have to figure out what your strengths are and then, you know, play to those things. And accept that not everything is going to be exactly perfect every time, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, I think initially I got stuck that I had to write every review perfectly, especially if I became friends with the author. Ooh, I wanted it to be the best review they ever read. Um, and then you have to like learn that not everything is the best thing you've ever done. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's just really good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, give yourself grace. That's yeah. like the number one thing. Yeah. Just get yourself great. And coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of coffee. Okay. Unfortunately, we are over time. We give our panelists a quick round of applause. Yeah. 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 With us is Eris and uh, Rodeo Reese. We really are live. Are we we are live on someone's TikTok. Hey. Sup? Hey, y'all. Hey, everyone. I don't know if this we is allowed, know. but let me show you. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. But uh, they, they were, they were like, oh, 